Welcome back to lesson 10. Now this time we're going to be looking at local and global variables. Um, we did actually use them in lesson 9 when we started to look at functions but I decided not to talk too much about them because it would just get confusing. So in this lesson we're going to look at what the difference is between a local and a global variable. We'll look at the benefits and the dangers between the two different types because uh, there can be some interesting problems that you can come across and we'll also look at how we actually declare the local or global variable within our code. So I'm hoping this is going to be a relatively straightforward lesson but the you can look on this lesson almost as an addition to the functions lesson because you'll start to see how the differences between local and global variables improve with the use of functions and also how they can simplify your code and reduce the chances of getting bugs. So let's get straight on with it and get into the IDE. So I've got the IDE started and I've already loaded up my sketch. Again, if you go to the Digital Town website, the sketch will be available. It's under Lesson 10 and it's a very, very simple sketch. So let's just have a quick look through and see what's going on so that we understand and see just how simple this is. So I've got an integer. I've declared a return value. I've declared another integer Q. Now these, although we've just called them variables up till now, they are actually global variables. Now a global variable is a variable that is declared outside of any function. And what that means is because it's declared outside of any function, it can actually be read inside any function. So if we go down to our main loop, in this sketch, we're saying that for q equals 0, q is smaller than 10, q++. plus plus. So we're going to do a loop with a value of a for loop of a value of q starting at 0 until it gets to a value of 9. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass the value of q to a function that I've created. And I've given it a very uh, clever name. I've called it multiply because what it actually does is in this function that's been created called multiply it takes the value that's passed to it and I've called that my value for inside the function and what it does is it takes my value it multiplies it by 10 hence the name multiply and then there's an integer here called new value and that value is then returned as the integer output of this function and that return comes out and my return value equals the return value from the function and then all we're going to do is we serial print q and we print the return value and there you go and already as you can see I've already started up the I've loaded the sketch and started up the COM port and here we go so Q is worth zero it passes it it passes a value of zero to multiply multiply then takes that value multiplies it by 10 0 multiplied by 10 equals zero and then it returns the value and we our return value is then has that value of zero it gets printed out and then we work through one two three four five and as we can see for every number we pass across a value of uh, that number multiplied by 10 gets returned and then when our loop gets to a value of 9 it stops and it starts again at 0 and lo and behold we see there after a value of 9 we come back and we get that 0. Now all of these variables are global except 
for this value and this value because they are declared within the function they are local variables now there's a big difference between this if we try to print the value of new value in fact um, maybe we should try that put this down in our code we'll serial print new value if we try to try to compile the code hopefully it won't take too long now you see we get an error message here new value was not declared in this scope and what it's saying is that within this function within this loop basically it's never heard of this ver this ver variable it's saying that you know i know nothing about this variable and that's because the variable only exists within this particular function and that is what they call scope of a variable so we could print the value of q or use the value of q within this function just as we're using it within this function let's just comment that out because it's never going to work so q is available here because it is a global variable and we could use q within this function if we wanted but a local variable cannot be used outside of that function so if you like the this integer suddenly exists the parking space is created we can alter the values within that space but as soon as we exit the function that variable is destroyed so that's the basic difference between a local variable and a global variable and in the next sketch we'll start to see different ways that this can be used now in the second sketch just a quick flick through it's basically exactly the same sketch except for one little change if you remember in the last uh, sketch in here was a value of 10 this time what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the value that we pass which just happens to be q and we're going to multiply it by q now this just shows that the variable q is a global variable and can be called both in our main loop function and in the multiply function and i've already compiled it and as you can see on the right hand side we see it here zero times zero because that's the value of q equals zero one times one two times two you should be getting the picture now what i want to show you now is one of the issues that comes with global variables so let's just imagine that we want q to equal 10. so if i write in here q equals 10 if i now compile the code A moment passes by and you'll start to see a problem that can occur so easily so now if we look at what's going on you'll see that we start here for q equals 0 q is smaller than 10 so the first value that passes is a 0 that 0 when it gets here is multiplied by 10 because we've said that q is 10 but in changing the value of q because it is a global variable when we go back down here q is no longer 0 it's not even incremented by 1 
it's been changed to a value of 10. And so what you see here is a danger that we can face where we have global variables that are being used throughout a big program. It's very, very easy to lose track of just what is happening to that variable. And so what we try and do as much as possible is keep the variables local. Now very often when you're learning to program the Arduino, because the sketches that we're doing are very, very small, you can get away with using global variables all the time. But once you start to get to a bigger program, especially if you've got multiple tabs in your program, um, one of the things you can do is when you when your sketch gets too big, you can add another tab and put half your sketch in another tab to try and make it clearer. But of course, that means that if you've got global variables that are being used all over the place, it is very, very easy for a variable to become corrupted in a part of the program that you don't realize is doing that corruption. And that is why it is much better to pass variable information through the function which is received back in the function and then pass the return value back to your original loop. So the values can still be passed backwards and forwards but it is not a good idea to be trying to change variables that are global in many many different places in your program it can really cause you some serious problems so what we're going to do now is look at a third sketch and look at a better way of writing this out okay so here we are back with sketch version 3 now you'll notice the difference here there are no variables declared up here in this version we're having no global variables at all. So if we come down now to the main loop, my integer q is now declared in this loop and also my integer return value is also declared in this loop. And the reason I've declared them in here is these values aren't being kept to be used anywhere else later. So it's not a problem for me if they're destroyed. If you think about it, Q, as soon as it's gone through this loop, it gives its return values. And as soon as we've finished and come out of the end here, I don't care if the value of Q is destroyed or return value is destroyed. I don't need to use it later. But what I do want to show you now is what I've done back up in the multiply function. Now, We've got my value is a local variable. We've got new value is a local variable. But I've also introduced a variable q. Now you'll notice I've got a variable called q in my main loop. And I've got a variable q in this particular function. And if you notice, as before, I've made Q equals Q plus 10 just to make sure that Q here has a value of 10. And as you can see, I've compiled my code and I've already uploaded it to the Arduino. And if you look here, we're getting the same results that we got when I just put a 10. If you remember when it was just a 10 in here. And what's happening this time round is that the value of Q within this function does not affect the value of Q within this function because both of the variables are local. Now, anyone who's been doing these lessons for a bit of time knows that I seem to like using Q for a counter. Q, W, A, S, Z and X are my standard counters. Um, it doesn't take you much to figure out why because they're just on the far left of the keyboard and I'm lazy. It's as simple as that. But what this means is that I can have a number of functions and just imagine if you have a very very large program 
I've written a particular program for a model railway controller and that probably has 10 or 12 tabs of code. I dread to think how many functions are within that particular sketch but because I use lots and lots of functions I can use a value like Q as a counter over and over again and what it helps me to do within my code is know that when I see Q it's just a counter within that particular function and that value is not going to affect anything elsewhere as we've seen we can pass the value of Q to the function multiply and we can pass a return value which is uh, our new value we can pass that back to the other function but we can do that without the one set of variables interfering and destroying the other set of variables so this sort of thing getting used to the idea of local and global variables can really help with your programming for a start if I had a huge um, program where I've got a hundred different functions and each one of them needs a counter within it I'm going to start running out of letters of the alphabet very very quickly so again it helps to allow you to reuse certain variable names and in your own mind you can say when I see one of those types of variables for me it's that Q W A S Z and X I know that they are just going to be very very simple counters where the numbers are being changed as it goes through various loops very very simple things but it allows me to use them over and over again but also as we see here there is no chance because they're all local variables there is no chance of one value corrupting a value elsewhere if you can get your code to the point that you can use all local variables you've done very well let's be honest there are programs where you're always going to have certain global variables that's just one of those things that happens but the less global variables you can have the easier your code is to maintain because again if we change the value of Q in here the advantage with a local variable is it has no effect on the value of Q down here whereas if I change something globally it could affect a different this function because I've changed a value in this function as we've seen in the previous example so that's the basics of the difference between a global and a local variable a global variable would be declared up here something like um, there we go that's how we would declare our global variable whereas down here we have our local variable the difference is this one is created within the function this one is created outside the function so I hope that's been useful to you it's um, I hope not too complicated but uh, like all these things it takes some thinking about but take a look at your code when you're writing different examples just take a look at what you're doing and where possible try and make your variables local whenever possible and you will save yourself a lot of pain and bugs especially as your coding improves so bye for now and if uh, you find the video helpful don't forget to click the like and subscribe buttons bye for now